Okay, students, am I audible to you all? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So, uh, welcome students to the pre-placement training on the session two on basics of accounting. In my study session on basics of accounting, we covered the meaning of accounting, the basic accounting concepts. Today we will be seeing what is the basic terms used in accounting, what is the basis for recording transactions in accounting, and what are the basic books for accounting. Students who have opted for finance or accounting as their, who will be opting for the finance or accounting as your job profile, they need to be well versed with the basic terminologies that will be used in the accounting which again can be a question raised by an interviewer on the terms that are used in accounting. So let us go through the basic terms in accounting. Though you all must be aware of these terms, I'll just quickly brush you all towards the different terms used in accounting. So first, entity. Now, what, what do you mean by entity? So entity is nothing but it is a structure, a legal structure or a type of a business. So entities can either be a sole proprietor, can also be called as an entity, a partnership firm can be called as an entity or a limited liability partnership or a company. So entity is nothing but a, just a structure or a form of a business. Okay. And each entity students has a different set of laws, regulations, and different types of act, like whatever laws are applicable to sole proprietor, that there is a different uh, law applicable to or an act applicable to a partnership firm. Whatever partnership firm, the laws are applicable, that won't be applicable to a company. So company has a different act. So each entity has a separate set of, a unique set of requirements, unique set of laws and tax implications. So just entity is nothing but it is a legal structure or a type of a business. Next, what is the meaning of transactions? See students, when you all go to any interview, okay, the job profile that you're opting for is very important because if in if you're going to into sales and they ask you what is a transaction, that definition will be different. But when they are asking you what is the meaning of when you're going for a job profile in accounting and they ask you what is a transaction, then you need to give an answer in respect of accounting, okay, because your job profile is into accounting and finance. So each answer will be based on the profile that you are opting for. So business transaction is nothing but as you know, it is an event which involves like there will be interchange of goods. Okay. Uh, services between two or more parties is a transaction. And a business transacted between two or more parties engaged in the business. Okay. It may be a retail shop between like a customer and a retail shop owner when they are when they are exchanging the goods in return of the money that becomes a transaction so transaction is nothing but an event involving interchanging of goods or services in return for some monetary consideration next now what do you mean by asset Asset, as you all already know, is nothing but it is something of value or something of resource to the company, to an entity. When I say entity, it involves all the other business structures also. So asset is nothing but something of value, okay, that is held by the entity and that can be converted into cash. Next, what is a fixed asset? Now, fixed asset is nothing but it is a long-term tangible asset tangible is which you can see so fixed asset is a tangible asset which is owned by the company okay it is a long-term tangible maybe property equipment which is owned by the company or the entity and the entity will use such asset to generate a revenue and such asset is not converted into cash within one year. So fixed asset is an asset that is held for a period of more than one year into the business. Next, current asset. Current assets is nothing but it is an, again, asset of a company, but which is expected to be sold, consumed, 
okay within a period of one year so students can you tell me where does current asset fall in which financial statements is current asset shown because many the times balance will be asked the question the with which balance sheet which side and under what ma'am asset sir ma'am asset sir asset sir under current assets very good okay so next is liabilities liabilities is nothing but something a person or an entity owes usually in the sum of money usually a sum of money that an entity is owing to some other person or a company is nothing but a liability what is long term liabilities long term liabilities are financial obligations again of the company that are due for more than one year in the future now long term liabilities are those liabilities okay where the payment need not be made within a period of one year and where the payment the comp the entity is obligated to make the payment over a period of one year now short term liabilities you can also say them as current liabilities okay where the firm is expected to pay off the debts within a year and where are short term liabilities again shown it is shown on the is shown in the balance sheet and the liability side that is on the left hand side students you all need to know where each of the terms in accounting is falling in the financial statements financial statements has your pndl your balance sheet your cash flow so you need to know where exactly what is supposed to fall now next is what is capital capital is nothing but the money put in by the owner into the business so capital is the amount invested into the business by the owners next sales what is the meaning of sale sale is nothing but simple transaction between two or more parties in which the buyer will receive the goods or services in exchange of money so transaction is an event and sales is something where sales is a transaction between two or more parties next is revenue what do you mean by revenue so revenue is nothing but the income that is generated from the normal business operations and revenue also includes your discounts deductions from whatever merchandise that is been returned so revenue is not only your sales but also it will be the net sales after you deduct your discounts or sales return so where is revenue shown students in your uh, financial statements where is revenue depicted profit and loss profit and loss account income and expenditure in your profit and loss account yes. okay next is what is expenditures expenditures is nothing but again the cost of operation that a company incurs in order to generate your revenue so it costs money to make money right so whatever expenses are in whatever cost is incurred in order to gain the revenue it is a expense next what is profit profit is nothing but the financial benefit that is realized when the revenue is generated from business activities exceeds your expenditures cost when your revenue exceeds your cost it becomes your profit which becomes a financial benefit to the entity what is a loss a loss as you know when your expenditure exceeds your revenue it is a loss discounts discounts are nothing but a reduction of a reduction in the price of a product or maybe a services okay so why are usually discounts given students can you all tell me why are discounts given to the customers anyone no, main reason why discount correct in order to increase the sales in order to increase the revenue in order to increase the profits so discounts are given next is vouchers now what is the meaning of voucher when this question will be raised if you are opting for a job profile in accounting 
then you need not talk about the vouchers that is given at the time of sale gift voucher you need not give answer in that terms because it is asked in the financial term so voucher is nothing but you can see a document which is used by the entity okay it is like a supporting document which is used by the entity in order to help the entity to know what is the actual account payable so usually if any expenses incurred by the company it prepares a voucher okay and it is maintained by the accounts payable department okay and it is like a supporting document for your expenditures next what are goods goods are nothing but whatever we are purchasing whatever items are being purchased okay they become the goods okay and these goods are returned as purchases in the books of accounts you will not write goods in the books of accounts you will write it as purchases and when the goods are sold you will write it as sales and the when the goods are unsold during a particular uh, period you will write it as stock so goods means nothing but items which you are bringing or you are going to sell it okay so if you are bringing the items it is going to be as purchases if you are selling it it is going to be your sales and if the goods are unsold by the end of the particular accounting period or the financial period it becomes your stock so stock is your unsold goods next is what is the meaning of drawings so as you know if any money is withdrawn or any goods are withdrawn by the owner of the business for his personal use okay it becomes drawings and majorly drawings form part for sole proprietor entities which are falling into sole proprietorship or into partnership next is purchases now as i already told you is purchases is nothing but again it is the Uh, when when you when you are buying any merchandise any goods you have to record it as purchases in your books of accounts okay and then in purchases you have again two type they may ask you what is the meaning of gross purchase and net purchase so gross purchase is nothing but before your purchases return or before your purchases discounts or any purchase rebate that is given by the uh, seller it becomes your gross purchases and when you deduct uh, the purchases by the discounts given by the purchase returns you will get your net discount so net discount is after giving effect to all the discounts purchase discounts purchase allowances and purchase returns next is stock as i already told you all stock is nothing but the unsold goods that are lying in the business by the end of a period it becomes it is called as a stock next who is a debtor a debtor is a person or an individual okay where we, who is owing or going to owe money to the entity so debtor is a person who owes money to the entity in and next creditor is a person to whom the entity owes a owes money now what is the meaning of accrued expenses accrued expenses are nothing but expenses that have been incurred but till now it has not yet been paid so it outstanding expenses become your accrued expenses means they are incurred but the payment is not yet been made next what is the what is the meaning of balance sheet so it is nothing but a financial statement that reports all the entities assets liabilities equity okay so balance sheet is a financial statement which shows your assets liabilities and equities of the entity next what is the meaning of book value so we know that an asset is depreciated every year okay but the book value shows the original value of the asset less any accumulated depreciation so the book value is a value at which a particular asset was been recorded in the books okay and less depreciation because depreciation is something that is done to the assets at the end of every year next equity now what is the meaning of equity equity is nothing but 
whatever value is left after all the liabilities have been removed. So, so if you all recall, there is an equation which says that assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. So if you take all your assets and if you subtract all your liabilities, you are left with the equity, which is nothing but it is a portion of the company that is owned actually by the owners and investors. So equity is that portion in the company that is owned or that belongs to the investors in case of company and owners in case of partnership firm or sole proprietorship. Next, cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold are nothing but expenses that directly relate to the creation of a product or services. So what is the cost relating to the goods that have been sold? So it's really directly related to the manufacturing of a product, the cost relating to the manufacturing of a product or the services. Okay. So that is the meaning of cost of goods sold. Next, gross margin. Now gross margin is again a percentage calculated by taking the gross profit and dividing with dividing it with the revenue, you will get the gross margin. So it will show the profitability of the company after deducting your cost of goods sold. Now what is gross profit? Then gross profit also indicates the profitability of a company. Okay. Now under gross profit, you will not take your overhead expenses. Okay. Only your revenue. And to generate that revenue, what cost is involved? Only that cost. So in short, your gross profit is nothing but your revenue minus cost of goods sold will give you your gross profit. When you are calculating gross profit, you are not going that is, you are not going to consider overhead expenses. Next, your income statement. Now, income statement is now if you all are asked, what is an income statement? So don't get confused. Income statement is nothing but your PL account. Okay. And again, it is a financial statement that shows all your revenues, all your expenditures, all your profits that the company is earning in a given period of time. Next, net income. What is the meaning of net income? Net income is the actual profit. It is nothing but net profit, actual profit that is earned by the company. Okay. Now this net income is considering all the revenues, direct and direct, all the expenses, direct and direct. When you minus the revenue from your expenses, you get net income. Net margin is again a percentage that is calculated okay, by again dividing your net profit by the revenue for a particular given period. Next, what is cash flow? If they ask you what is cash flow, then cash flow is nothing but it shows the inflow and outflow of a cash in the business. Okay, it will show you and this cash flow, whatever net cash flow for a period, it shows or it is found, found out, you find out the cash flow by taking the cash at the beginning, okay, and minusing the cash balance at the end. So whatever cash balance, opening cash balance minus the closing cash balance will show you the cash flow that you have used, okay, during the period. When there is a positive cash flow, means you are having a positive cash flow, then it indicates that more cash is flowing into the business. So there is more inflow of cash than outflow. And if it's in a negative cash flow balance, if you have, then it shows that your cash outflow expenses are more than your incomes. So cash outflow is more than your cash inflow. It shows it gives you a negative cash balance. And if it is a positive cash balance, it means your inflow of cash is more than your outflow. Next, debit or credit. Now you all know what is the meaning of credit and debit. So usually what items are credited, then there is an increase in the liability. It has been credited. When there is a decrease in asset, it has been credited. When there's a decrease in expense, it has to be credited. What is debit? What are the items that fall on the debit side? Is when there is a increase in an asset or increase in an expense, you debit it. And when there is a decrease in a liability or equity, you debit it. So these are based on your, 
the rules of accounting, which we will be seeing shortly. Next, diversification. Now, if they ask you what is the meaning of diversification, is nothing but it is something, it is a method actually of reducing your risk. So the goal here is that in diversification is yet that you have to allocate your capital across multiple assets so that the performance of one asset will not impact the performance of the total in totality. So even if your funds are if all your funds are put just in one particular asset, there is there are high chances of you losing. So when you diversify, diversify, that means when you allocate your asset over different multiple uh, assets, you're trying to reduce your risk because even if one asset the performance of one asset will not affect the performance of others. Therefore, your risk is getting reduced through diversification. Next is fixed cost. Now, fixed cost is one that does not change. Okay. Fixed cost remains fixed irrespective of your sales. Okay. Like your rent. Rent, suppose if your business, you're running a business on a rented premises, then rent whatever you're paying. It is going to be fixed. It is not dependent on your sales. Even if your sales are zero, yet you're supposed to pay rent. Even if your sales are more than a lakh, yet you're supposed to pay rent. So, so cost that remains fixed irrespective of the sales is your fixed cost. GAAP is gap, which is nothing but generally accepted accounting principles. And these principles need to be followed by all the accountants okay to perform the act of accounting okay and this helps these are general rules that have been framed okay when you want to compare the businesses financial reports so generally accepted accounting principles are principles that need to be followed while you are accounting for next is interest Interest is again, you all know what's the meaning of interest in the terms of accounting is nothing but whatever amount is paid by the, the entity, okay, uh, maybe to repay a loan or interest that may also have different meaning like interest that has been charged uh, from a creditor for the late payment or interest charged by the debtor for we making a late entity making a late payment. So that's the meaning of interest. Liquid Liquidity. Now, this is very important. This is very frequently asked in the interview. What is the meaning of liquidity? Liquidity is nothing but how quickly can something be converted into cash? Okay. So how quickly you can convert your current assets into your cash will show the liquidity, how, how liquid the company is in getting its cash by converting in uh, converting its current assets. Next is overhead. Overheads are, you all know what is overhead. Overheads are all the expenses that are related in uh, to running, to, to run the business, whatever expenses are to be incurred, they're called as overheads, okay? And overheads, all, often you all know, it includes all the indirect expenses like rent, okay, salaries of maybe the executives, etc. Next, payroll. What is the meaning of payroll? Again, important, payroll is nothing but the account that shows the payments that is made to a employee salary, whatever employees getting wages, bonus, deductions. So payroll is nothing but an account that shows all the payments made to the employees. Okay. Next is, now can anyone tell where will payroll be depicted in your financial statements? Where is payroll usually shown in your financial statements? Students, I'm asking you all. If it, if it is in salary that is being payable, it will be shown on your profit or loss account in your expense side. But suppose if expenses. Okay, but I suppose if it is an unpaid wages or accrued wages, which is not paid, okay, uh, maybe like uh, due to 
just an example due to corona if uh, some organizations are not paying the making the payments then they become accrued accrued expense as i already told you is what that expense is incurred for that particular month but payment is not made so it becomes outstanding and when there is any outstanding wages it will come on your liability side so again payroll you have to be very specific if it is payable it's going to come on your liability side otherwise it's it's going to be part of your pnl account next is a uh, present value so again what is the meaning of present value it, it it is the value of the asset as on today okay so there's a difference between a present value and a book value Pre present value is whatever value of an asset is as on today it is a present value receipts what is the meaning of receipts so receipt is nothing but a document that proves that your payment was made okay next is roi return on investment so what is return on investment the profit that the company is making so whatever the return that the company is making okay based on the investment it has made so the return that the company is making in the on the investments that it has made is nothing but return on investments next what is the meaning of variable cost variable cost is again opposite to the fixed cost variable cost is a cost or an expense which will change which doesn't remain fixed which keeps on varying which keeps on changing with the change in the level of the sales okay with the change in the level of the volume of sales and if the sales increases the variable cost increases if the sale decreases the variable cost decreases so variable cost has a direct relationship with the sales so these are the few basic terms in accounting okay which the meaning of each you all got to know you all got to know where will it fall in your financial statements okay and which a few of these may be asked by the interviewer in your placements next next is what is the basis for recording transaction this is again very important now this particular slide is going to help you pass journal entries because many a times what happens in the placements that you will have to go to through certain rounds maybe a written round where you all are supposed to pass certain journal entries so based on the rules of debit and credit you can pass any journal entry okay whatever is given so as you already know what is an accounting equation asset is equals to liability plus capital now i have already told you all what is an asset i have told you all what is a liability what is a capital now let us see what are the rules of debit and credit based on these rules you all are supposed to frame a journal entry okay and journal entry will help you take it further uh, prepare the financial statements further so journal entry is the base okay is the first step in accounting which will help you reach in the preparation of your financial statements so as, as we know there is there is balance sheet and pnl following in your financial statements pnl consists of your expenses and revenue and balance sheet consists of your asset liability and capital now what has to be debited what has to be credited so already this is just a brush up for you all so if any asset by a transaction now you know what is a transaction by a particular transaction if you are feeling that a particular asset is increasing in the business you are supposed to debit it if you are feeling by a particular transaction the asset in the business is decreasing then you are supposed to credit it similarly if a particular transaction your the liabilities of a business is increased then you have to credit it if the liability of the business is decreased you have to debit it capital on the same lines of liability because liabilities and capital fall on the same side of the balance sheet that is the that is why it has the same effect if the capital is being decreased in the business it has to be debited capital is increased in the business it has to be credited similarly expense and revenue expenses and losses follow the same rule as assets and revenue follow the same rule as liabilities and capital so in case of expenses increasing in the business you're always going to debit that particular expense 
if any expense is decreasing in the business, you're going to credit that particular expense. Similarly, revenue, if revenue is in, uh, decreasing in the business, you're going to debit it. And if revenue is increasing in the business, if your sales are increasing, you're always going to credit the sales because it forms part of your revenue. So all you need to know is liabilities, capital and revenue, they follow the same rule and asset and expenses follow the same rule for accounting or passing the journal entry. So this is very, very important students because they may give you a set of journal entries to be passed. So based on the rules of debit and credit, you can pass the journal entries. In my sessions to come, I will take you all through all the basic questions that are asked in the interview. And that is the time I will be questioning you all regarding the same. So I hope you all have paid attention to, uh, to the session that I was taking. Since we are done with the time, we will conclude the session for today. This we will see in our tomorrow session. So thank you so much, students. I hope you have understood the basic terms in accounting and the base for passing the journal entries, that is the rules for passing the journal entries. So thank you so much, students. Thank you.